This week we show you the hacks, the tweaks, the products that help keep things working right in our RV so we can enjoy the RV lifestyle without worry. We have a dozen of them to share with you that you can also use with your RV, so stay tuned. We've been RVing now for what, seven, going on eight years, and in that time we've learned a lot of stuff. We've tried a lot of stuff. We've had all sorts of products, we've done lots of tweaks, and um, well, we have some we want to share with you today. So we have quite a few different things here that we think you could benefit from what we've learned. In fact, 12 of them. You ready? <laughs> We're ready. Here we go. Let me let you in on a secret. The electrical pedestals at many campgrounds are really in bad shape. The electricity that comes out of them can be dirty, it can be low voltage, it can be high voltage, it can have spikes. And if that electricity is not regulated properly, it can do major damage to everything inside your RV, all of the appliances. That's why we picked up this. This is the Southwire Surge Guard Protector. This unit installs between the electric pedestal at the campground and the power cord that connects to your RV. It provides protection against power surges, open ground, open neutral, low, high voltage, anything that could damage your interior components. The unit continuously monitors and displays voltage and amp draw, and it does an automatic reset when power is restored in the event of a blackout. Everything's clean before feeding power into your rig. You can get this at many RV shops. On Amazon, it's about 235 bucks. It's money very well spent. So it's funny that we're doing this tip video right now because the very next place we camped after we shot the uh, earlier part, uh, I came to the pedestal like this, and I could have just easily plugged my cord right in, but instead I, I always put my tester in first and uh, take a look at this. See the red flashing light? reverse polarity. Now if I had plugged my cord into there it could have done really a lot of damage. But thank goodness for that flashing light and the uh, LED screen which tells me this is a bad plug. And like I said that is something that you find often at many campgrounds. Many of these campgrounds the infrastructure is really old. They've been abused. They're used constantly and it is not all that unusual to find bad power at a campground pedestal. One of the most used pieces of equipment on your RV is a retractable step that you use to go in and out. Without frequent lubrication, it squeaks and can easily get stuck. A mistake many RVers make is using WD-40. Don't use that. It builds up a mess. It collects road debris. You just don't want to go there. A product we use is Quick Lube. Quick Lube is made for RV use. It doesn't make a mess. It doesn't collect road debris. You can use it about every four to six weeks. You can spray it on. If your RV comes with a slide out, you really need to take care of that too and do some basic maintenance, particularly around the rubber seals that line your slide outs. Those seals are what keep out water and thus in our book anything we can do to protect those rubber seals is pretty important. A light spray with this stuff along those rubber seals helps repel water, it keeps it clean, and it generally just helps condition. We do it about twice a year. A can of this stuff costs 13 bucks on Amazon. Too many RVers leave fresh water in their tank too long, and it gets skunky really quick. You really need to empty it after each camping trip. But the fresh water drain on most RVs never seems to be in a convenient spot. On our Leisure Travel Van Unity model, we had to lie flat on the ground and then reach way under the coach to drain that tank. We found the solution on a coach at a recent rally owned by Richard McGarrity. So at Holland Motorhomes in Holland, Michigan, we had them add a pipe extension to bring the drain knob out to a location we can reach without having to get down under the ground. They firmed it up with braces and fashioned a shield to protect it from anything kicked up from the road. Speaking of fresh water, here's something that we add to our hose and the intake connector on our RV. A quick connect. 
This solves the problem of having to thread and tighten the connectors by hand. Something that needs to be lined up just so and always seems to result in an annoying little leak. The quick disconnect takes seconds. It snaps on and off instantly and is totally leak free. You can get them at any RV shop or Amazon for about $13. One more must have for fresh water filters. We use inline water filters between our hose and whatever source of water that we're hooking up from, uh, whether it's a uh, drinking safe hose or whether it's a spigot at a campground. These filters are extremely important. You wouldn't believe the junk and gunk and sediment that's in some of the freshwater spigots at uh, campgrounds. The filters are amazing. They reduce bad taste, uh, odors, chlorine, sediment, and they also protect against bacteria growth when the filter's not in use and it's kept inside a hot storage compartment. We've seen way too many RVers at a campground connect directly to the water spigot with no filter at all. That is just not a smart thing to do. They're available everywhere uh, on Amazon. You can get two of them for 20 bucks, and we change ours twice a season. You need one more thing related to your fresh water hookup on your RV, and that's a pressure regulator. Too much water pressure from a campground city water connection can blow out your plumbing lines. Putting this little screw on connector at one end of the hose regulates water pressure flow to a safe, consistent 40 to 50 pounds of operational pressure. All RV stores sell these and they're available on Amazon for under $10. Now let's talk about the black water tank, in particular the odors that come from that tank. We have all experienced them. To minimize those odors, the most important thing we can tell you is use enough water. Use lots of water when you flush, lots of water. And when you do empty that black tank, fill it right up to the top with water before you empty it. That will help in controlling the odors. Now over the years we have tried many different chemicals and many different uh, solutions to try and minimize that odor. We have finally settled on this. This is the best we have ever found. It's called Happy Camper. It's all organic and comes in powder form. One scoop handles a tank up to 40 gallons. We get the tub that provides 64 treatments. It's 44 bucks on Amazon and often sells out. But of all the products we've used over the years, this one is hands down the most effective. This is one of the handiest products that we've come across. Nobody likes grime on their rig and most campgrounds will not let you wash your rig at the campground. So with this, we can get it clean. This little bottle called Shine Armor works wonders. It washes the surface without water, shines and protects as well. Spray it on a cloth and wipe it on the RV. It's amazing. We use it for spot touch-ups and even have done the whole RV with it. It took most of a $20 8 ounce bottle to do the entire RV, but that's about what it costs us at one of those coin automated vehicle washes. It's not meant for windows, but it does clean the RV body and stainless steel. We just added this accessory ladder to the rear of our RV. Now there's a lot of reasons I need to get up on the roof to uh, clean off the solar panels, to uh, remove any junk, you know, tree limbs and leaves and acorns and stuff that falls on the roof, or just to maybe sometimes in the wintertime get the snow off. So it's really nice to have. The ladder comes in two sections. The top is firmly attached. A lower section stores securely in a side storage cabinet. I ordered mine from a dealer and had it professionally installed. This is such a handy little doodad. It's called the Mega Cuff, and we use it on our hoses and on our electric cords. You just wrap it around, put it right under. You want everything to stay neat and tidy and not get all messed up. It has serrated teeth on it. Set it around and clamp it shut, and you are in business. Voila. We bought ours at one of the big box home improvement stores, but they are also on Amazon. We found a four pack listed there for $12.49. Last on our list, leveling blocks. They kind of look like uh, giant Lego toys. They stack into each other. Now these are really great for class B or small towable trailers to 
put under the wheels to get it level when you're at a campsite. But even if you have a larger RV and have an automatic leveling system like we have with our Leisure Travel Vans Unity FX, they come in handy too. We put these underneath the hydraulic pads that come down to level the unit when we park on grass or on dirt. And that way it kind of spreads that off and doesn't stick them in the dirt. They're fine when it's on cement, but when you're on uh, dirt, these are really nice to put underneath those uh, hydraulic pads. You can get them just about everywhere. For under $30, we found them on Amazon. Did you get all 12 of those? Well, we'll put links of them in the description below. Meantime, we hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, subscribe to the RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. We're Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Thank you for watching. Happy trails.